Uh, so I just would like to say a few words, and I would like to start by saying that I'm delighted, uh, delighted to be here at the launch of the Danube Institute, uh, headed by our mutual friend and distinguished published intellectual, John O'Sullivan. Uh, John's news uh, initiative, uh, based at this uh, beautiful city of Budapest, actually, you can hardly have found beautiful views of the dining hall. So this uh, John's new initiative, uh, based at this beautiful city of Budapest, is certainly, I think, of great importance to all Europeanists who are really committed to the European tradition of open-mindedness and free debate. And we, I would submit that we certainly need an open and free debate in Europe these days. We need a debate where uh, some dogmas of the European Union can be tested against, or let us say compared with some facts of real Europe. Take the Euro, for example. We have been told that the Euro as a single currency, and mind you, not, as only, not only as a common European currency, but as a single European currency, the Euro, we were told, uh, would increase political unity and economic convergence uh, within the Eurozone, among the members of the, of the Euro. What we now have within the Eurozone, though, is almost the opposite. We have southern European countries trapped in deep economic recession, struggling with a currency that is overvalued for their needs, and therefore completely deprived of the capacity to adjust monetary policy to their own needs and circumstances. At the same time, we have increasing political hostility between northern and southern public opinions, I mean within the Eurozone, with northerners talking about lazy southerners and, mind you, southerners talking about greedy. Furthermore, and probably I think more, uh, more concerning even, uh, we have uh, we now witness in southern, especially in southern European countries, a dramatic erosion of popular support for mainstream democratic parties. While I, at the same time, we observe the rise of extremist parties from both the far left and the far right, and Greece, of course, is. An, main case in point, but maybe Italy could be also an example, certainly Greece is the, the most uh, worrying example. In Portugal this hasn't happened yet, I mean the rise of extremist parties, but the support for mainstream democratic uh, parties has been, uh, is being is eroded uh, dramatically over the last couple of years. Now, is this really the land of European reconciliation and economic convergence that the Euro founders have promised us. Should the Euro be perceived as the future single currency of all member states of the European Union, including, incidentally, Hungary and Poland? Should the European Union be perceived as a project committed to a never closer union. This, ladies and gentlemen, I think are crucial questions that we should be allowed, we should be allowed to discuss in a calm and civilized manner within the European Union, without fearing the immediate accusations <coughs> of being against Europe or against the Euro. I, for instance, and not against the Euro as such, uh, in the sense of a club, voluntary club, where countries can join but also can exit. And certainly I am not against the European project, I am for the European project, and for some reason, as John has mentioned, I hold the Gernet Chair in European Civilization at the College of Europe in Warsaw. And what has always distinguished European civilization, I submit, 
is, has been its capacity to accommodate variety, not uniformity, decentralization, not centralization, and peaceful evolution through competition and by trial and error, not by grand central plans that usually end up in tears. This is what, in my view, we need more in Europe. Variety, decentralization, gradual evolution by trial and error, and by peaceful, civilized competition between rival views and different experimental paths. It is this old European tradition of freedom and variety that I think the Danube Institute is now bringing back to us. And um, this is why I think all Europeanists should not only welcome the Danube Institute, but also give three cheers to the launch of the Danube Institute. Thank you very much.